And without any further ado, or starting soon music that I still don't know exactly why we haven't had the time to make a new beat, uh, with me, speaking of beats, someone who looks like a DJ today is the one and only John Urschel with those headphones. Do you do you mixtape after right after the show? Do you gonna go you gonna go hit the club? Is that your Oh idea? yeah, I'm getting ready to, you know, DJ a little bit. Is that your that's your other secret skill? You're a mathematician, exactly. a chess player, you play in the NFL, no big deal, mm -hmm. and you also DJ at night. Um, yeah, well, you know, Bose headphones. I am a Bose athlete, so you know, <laughs> there you go. no big deal. Uh, hopefully, you get some endorsement dollars for that little shout out right there. But all exactly. right, let's uh, let's talk a little bit about. Obviously, this is Amateur Hour, where we do chess with uh, mm -hmm. amateur players and provide inter interesting and instructive analysis um, with John Urschel leading the way today for his level. But I want to give a quick shout out, John, about one of the reasons you're our guest today, talking a little bit about tomorrow's match so tell mm -hmm. everybody how excited you are to take on the one and only the i mighty hutch tomorrow yeah so uh hutch and i are playing we're playing tomorrow on chess.com i think we're playing for straight up like three hours or so should be pretty fun it's for charity yep. and uh i know hutch has a pretty big following amongst you guys but hopefully at least some of you guys will be pulling for me i know chess.com like put out a little tweet about like oh who do you think's gonna win and I was not getting a whole lot of love. I was I was surprised to see that, you know, the chess.com fans, they're kind of on Team Hutch right now. So I'm trying yeah, to well, it, win it some shows, people over right now. It shows that a lot of them, I think, know Hutch more than they know you. Or maybe they're, you know, they're, they're voting with their hearts because a lot of them are probably big fans of Hutch. I mean, he's a little mm -hmm. more of an online celebrity than either you or me. No, I this mean, is very true. The, the guy's about to get a million subscribers on YouTube. Wait, um, really? Yeah, he's about to cross a million. Oh Lord! So it's a it's a big deal. He's Hutch is kind of a big deal. He's a celebrity, and uh, he's he's one of those guys that I have to tell my. It's like I'm super inspired by someone who's been able to create a life like he has, and I have to mm -hmm. remind my 11 year old that not everybody gets to be paid to play video games. <laughs> so um, anyway, this match is going down tomorrow. It's actually a match for charity. We we've mm -hmm. done a lot of blitz matches before, but this is one of the first ones we've ever done with non-grandmasters, and one of the first ones we've done for charity. So um, if you don't have plans for Wednesday, let's be honest, you probably don't. It's a Wednesday. What else are you doing with your life, right? Uh, if you're watching this show on a Tuesday, then you probably don't have fans, uh, plans for a Wednesday. Uh, join us as Hutch and John are going to be going down. Uh, Hutch will actually have a, a, a show himself. Grandmaster Robert Hess will actually not be able to join me. The original date we had planned for this match, uh, Bobby was going to be my wingman. But Bobby's in Japan right now. Yeah, he's he's loving Japan right now, actually. So so other than this little piece of information, everything you mm -hmm. see at this article here, which I'm going to share in the chat, uh, is, uh, is what's going down tomorrow. So I, I think it's going to be a blitz match that's different from others in the sense that you're not watching Carlson and Nakamura play moves that none of us understand, while Danny desperately tries to make enough accents up to keep people on their seat, on the edge of their seat. Right? This is going to be, I, you know, we're going to have a lot of time to talk about your guys' games and provide some interesting thoughts about where you guys go right and wrong, and maybe that'll be interesting for the for the audience who are probably most of them are a little closer to your level than they are to Magnus Carlsen's level. I'm just guessing, right? Mm -hmm. So uh, anyway, so that's what we're doing. And uh, real quick, I want to I want to share this link in the chat and uh, remind everybody, hopefully, that you'll check it out. And then let's dive into some to some chess. No more. Yeah, of this. let's do it. So today we're going till 3.30 and then uh, Title Tuesdays at 4. Sorry, I'm talking Eastern time. We're that's going right. till like 3.30 Eastern time. Title Tuesday at four, which obviously I'm stoked to watch. And for this like little chunk we have, I'm pretty much trying to get Danny to help me however he can to help me win as many games as I can tomorrow. So I think to start, we're going to look a little bit at like what Hutch does, yep. in particular what Hutch does against things that I typically do. So right. D Danny knows that, you know, as white, I'm typically a D4 player. I try to play Catalan type structures. As black, I'll play, you know, usually maybe a Slav or a Grunfeld, something like that, and just gotcha. see what he does. Well, I think I think to start, so if you see the amateur hour uh, analysis board I made with John Urschel, which anybody can actually follow uh, directly if they want to, if they want to come and join join the chat, I'll actually share a link to this. You can mm -hmm. you can follow the board yourself. Uh, 
So the first game I actually posted is 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 one of Hutch's most recent games, John, where he actually lost. Now this wasn't this wasn't a game where he played against D4, as you can see here. I don't know if, if you're following the game. He yeah, no, E4. I'm uh, I'm looking at the game right now. Okay, um, I think uh, if if let's start from the beginning and I'll make the moves here. So as we okay. go through it. Let, let's observe first real quick again so this is we're preparing for a match everybody right and this mm -hmm. is we're going to try to get john inside hutch's head as early as possible uh which isn't a fun place to be during the show because he's probably going to be screaming with explicitives but before the show this is where we want to be so he faced the only issue i have is i bet hutch hasn't doesn't have a lot of experience facing an opening repertoire like yours at his level i'm sure he's facing mostly e4 Mm -hmm. uh, but let's take a look at what happened in this game. Hutch was black okay. in this game, and he and he has a good understanding. Hutch, I, w I will say one thing about Hutch is he has a very good understanding of peace activity, the initiative, and kind of mm -hmm. the need to fight for the center. Mm -hmm. um, and so he, he he starts off, I actually like what he did here. So instead of going for the regular gambit, you know, where he might take on C3 and who knows if someone's going to play the full goring gambit, mm -hmm. you know, and, and sacrifice two pawns or if they're just going to take and play like a Danish gambit. Uh, but he, he doesn't want any part of it. He plays d5, which in a classical sense, this shows he has good principles because this is really the kind of move that you want to play. Um, are you are you making the moves for them? Because on my screen, I'm not seeing the moves. You're just going back and forth to the end of the game. Oh, what I'm what I'm doing what I'm on right now is the position after e5 for e5. If you maybe refresh. Uh, okay, I'll refresh. Let's see. Um. I'll make you a student in case you're not. There we go. Now I'm, yeah. Got it. Okay. So after e5, he played knight c6. That's probably not the best move, right? Uh, hold on. Let me look. I'm going to take the reins for a second. Cut. Four takes. D5. E5. Okay. The more I'm looking at this, the more I think that probably what we should do is actually jump into having you play some of the time controls you're going to play tomorrow and actually let me give you feedback on your openings. Yeah, you want to do that uh, right now? Yeah, let's start with that actually. All right, so I'm going um, for a game right now. All right, let me follow you. All right, uh, let's start with some three two. All right. You ready? I'm ready. Go for it. I'm following you. All right. Usually, I only do like ten minute blitz, and I'm like progressively worse as the time gets faster. So, get ready for me to lose. You haven't you Lose haven't started games. yet, have you? Have no, you I'm still searching. Okay. Still I'm searching. Following you, don't see a game yet. Okay. Three two is like fast by my standards. All right, we got a game. All right. E four. Let's go E five. Why not? Oh. Oh, this, King's Gambit. Okay, I, this could be right up Hutch's can alley. I, curse? I actually like this. Can I curse on this show? Because I, I hate <laughs> this opening so much. <laughs> I hate it so much. Words can't describe the hatred I have for this opening. <laughs> Just hatred on hatred on hatred. Do I? Yeah, I'll just take that. Let's... I think D5 there is actually an option. Uh, is D5 here yeah. an option? Well I'll, well, I'll talk a little bit about it as you pass the the situations because yeah, I we can. So I'm not really talking to you. I'm just talking to myself. Yeah, and I like it when you talk to yourself. By the way, um, I appreciate what that. I, what I'm going to do is actually I'm going to okay. bring up uh, so that everyone can follow your clocks as well. Okay. This dude's used like no time. What the what the what the French. Uh, Yeah, that threat's real. How do I handle that? Has this gone south already? This is maybe not gone south, but it depends. I mean, perhaps headed this big towards center, this big center could backfire for them. Well, you know, careful, I'm uh, I'm a little concerned about H7 right now. Right, as perhaps you should be. Yeah, perhaps not going south, but you know, I'm headed towards the border a little bit. Uh. Let's see. There we go. Now we've got a board that everyone can see your clocks in, and everyone's happy. Okay, well. Oh, I'm just thinking. Let me think.
All right, let's get active. Let's figure this out. Oh, I'm being a fool right now. Why am I doing stupid things? Someone tell me why. Very, very stupid things. All right, you're, go ahead, take that. This is going to be good. We're going to have a lot of things to talk about after this game. Yeah, because, yeah, no, this is, this is trash right now. Yep. That went badly. Okay. All right. So, First observation, all right? Yeah. First observation, I think we know that one of the things you're worried about headed into this match is your time management, right? Yeah. Getting down a little bit on time. I think mm -hmm. on paper, your ratings on chess.com and Hutch's ratings on chess.com would suggest that you're kind of the slight favorite. But when it mm -hmm. comes to time management, you're, um, you're not the fastest player. I'm not the yet. fastest, and I, I'm not the good at – not that good at trying to think and make decisions in like 10 to 15 seconds. Right. Like, you know, you really, you really enjoy your time. I enjoy and, uh, my time a lot. And so one of the things that you're going to have to establish tomorrow is, is a good pace for yourself where you don't let yourself go into a think tank, especially not too early. Mm -hmm. One of the things to remember is that even in the opening stage, even if you're facing an opening, you don't know is that, uh, unless you're about to make a huge blunder, then you're mm -hmm. probably not about to lose the game because there's yeah. going to be a lot of game left after this. Mm -hmm. So playing playing fast, you know, following the principles that you know to do as, as best you can if you know the opening or not, you mm -hmm. know, this is going to help you later on have a little more time in the critical moment because remember, if you get a winning position, it's a mm -hmm. lot easier to play faster when you're down, when you're up, when you're up on the board, right? Mm -hmm. So you don't want to play fast... Um, you know, you don't want to play so fast that you blunder because then you're in a losing position. But also, like, mm. you know, if you if you play fast enough in the opening, you'll have more time in the middle game to maybe use a combination and get a winning position. Right. Okay. Secondly, you played this move bishop to c5. Yeah. On move on move two. Yeah. Is that normally what you would do against a king's gambit, or were you just kind of rolling the dice there? No, this is normally what I would do. Okay. Um so this isn't the most orthodox like approach. Uh, normally, I, I would actually advise you to play on move two, something like e takes f4, take the pawn, and then strive for d5, or even yeah. d5 on move two. Um, gotcha. the, these are these are systems that are a little more principled in terms of like, hey, I don't know a lot of king's gambit theory. I'm just going to equalize in terms of activity and mm -hmm. d5. Kind of like I was talking about what Hutch did when we started the show. D5 is a way that you do that. Um, oh, I thought bishop c5 was more of the no, I don't want to play the King's Gambit. Let's try to develop a little bit quieter. So you can, but again, like yeah. quieter is like uh, put it this way: after when you get to like move, let's say even move four, mm -hmm. where you know you play d six to defend the center, and you're trying yeah. to avoid some of those sharp lines. Mm -hmm. You know, White having already established f four, like mm -hmm. puts them in a pretty good spot heading right. into the middle game because they That's they've true. got this extra space, right? Yeah. Um, so I personally think if you want to avoid all the craziness of the King's Gambit, best to just equalize in terms of activity. But let's not waste too much time on this because um, yeah, you I, I want to... you can teach me the King's Gambit another day because right, this is time, like... Right. So as we move forward, um, everything was, was going... was interesting here until, until this moment where after Bishop D2 on move 7, you traded and then you castled. Probably you're right. Probably you do need to try to strike in the center as quickly as possible. Maybe something with d5. Yeah. Something to try to prevent them from having just this massive pawn mass. Mm -hmm. Massive pawn mass, if that's a thing. Um, and, um, you know, d5 is a way to to open up the board and, and put the knight on e4. And, you know, if they play e5, and, and probably you can fight a little more aggressively for, for equality right to start. Mm -hmm. um, the way the game went after they established this, you know, this big center, you really have to like White's chances. Mm -hmm. um, okay, Queen to C two, you had a good chance. On move eleven, what move should you have played here on Queen to C two? Give me a second. Yep. Oh, I actually. Let me see. Is that what I like best? I like Knight to B four. But let me yep. see if I have anything better. No, I mean, that looks great. Yeah, I mean, knight to b4 looks good, but... 
Yeah. Yep, forking the the queen and bishop, and yeah. you know, basically, if they if they set up this big center, you just have to know that at some point that center is not just going to be yeah. to be looked at, right? They're going to try to open up the position with e5, and so probably knight to b4 should be played and eliminate that bishop on on d3. Um, but actually, what's funny is even after rook e8 and they get e5, probably even here you still have a chance to play knight to b4, um, and go get rid of that bishop. Um, on move, uh, on like move 12. Yeah, no, you're right, because after takes, yeah, you're right. So I want to play some more games, because I, I think the most important time control for you to be confident in is mm -hmm. this 3-2 time control and then some bullet, because I want to see how you manage your time. But let's try to do tips from every game to one okay. of the other. One, I want, you to, I want you to play the opening as quickly as you can, as long as you know the opening. As okay. soon as a move is played that you don't know, mm -hmm. you're going to stop and assess, has this position changed to where I need to change my normal plan, or mm -hmm. is it just full steam ahead? Okay, they played a move I didn't know, but I just need to go full throttle and play the normal plan in the Catalan or in mm -hmm. XYZ. This is all the right. critical thinking you should have in all blitz. Play as fast as you can as long mm -hmm. as you know the opening. As mm -hmm. soon as a move is played that you don't know, whether it's move 3 or 23, establish, do I not know this position because the plan needs to change, or have they just played a move that you know doesn't look to really change that much about what I know about these middle games full steam ahead? You know, So that's like your first way to just okay. get out of the gates fast, establish mm -hmm. a time advantage, um, and then you know, as you transition into the middle game, your goal should be similar to what you would normally do in a real game, but basically just playing faster, trusting yourself and your intuition, not having to, oh, you know, to double check every little thing. Okay. Play. All right, okay. So, so let's do it. All right. Let's see. All right. And I got a game. Uh, not playing E5 again. <laughs> no more King's Gambit, please. Okay. Okay, so gambit. See no reason not to take it. You know I love pawns. <laughs> Trust me, I love pawns too. Let's support that pawn. Yeah, I don't really need to take that. Let's see. Let's. This is somewhat. Thematic in the French, attacking the d4 pawn. Okay. And now. I think I can take here. That's all right. That seems like a reasonably intelligent move. Okay. But this gives me time to get my rook in. No, it doesn't. That was not the best move. Too slow. All right, let's do this maneuver. Yeah, all right, I'm not castling. I guess that is pretty reasonable. Okay. Let's get a piece in on C4. That'd be that'd be nice. All right, I've officially blocked in my light squared bishop. That's okay. So he's trying to reroute to B4. So to start, yeah, I'm just gonna. 
yeah, that's actually a little concerning because my A5 pawn could be kind of weak. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, but now might be a good time to... Yeah, get in uh, C4 with tempo. Perhaps. I work on F8. It's really lame. I want to get my king to E7. But... This gives their queen some checks that I need to think about. Mm. Yeah, maybe opening up like this is not the best for me right now. Okay, let's... Let's start with this. Yeah, okay. I gotta keep this somewhat closed, otherwise I'm in trouble. All right, how'd I get this king come? Knight into d5 could be a good square. Okay, I think to simply defend. Okay, oh, I see. Okay, that's a maneuver I don't like. So let's do that. Yeah, yeah, I see that. Okay. How the hell do I have 30 seconds left? What's going on here? Okay. This is what I didn't want to allow. Okay. Yeah, I see this. Yeah. Turning into trash very quickly. Actually, pretty stupid. No, okay. All right, 0 for 2. Okay, so first of all, your opponent played a pretty good game. Made some notes while you were playing. Um, you know, his, his initial gambit to start is a mm -hmm. good thing for you to note because you do play a French regularly, right? Uh, sometimes. A decent so, amount. What is your repertoire, by the way? Are you, I mean, how, how uh, often are you? So, against E4, like more or less no clue. Against uh, D4, uh, Slav, but uh, okay. I kind of want to be able to play the Grunfeld. And then against D4, I feel better equipped. E4, I feel very poorly equipped. Got it. 
Okay, well, I mean, it's interesting to note. I, I just had, um, I just hosted this Chess Today show, and we were talking about where to put time and effort in terms of studying, you know, mm -hmm. end games versus middle game and openings. And, you know, you yeah. definitely follow the line of, uh, the, you know, the approach that I really suggest for a lot of people, which is to study end games first, yeah. you know, and, and really work on their overall chess knowledge, knowing that the opening really doesn't have that much of an effect on the result until you get better, where now, you know, if everybody's playing openings at a higher level, okay, now it matters more, because if you let something slip early, the chances mm -hmm. that your opponent gives it back to you is very little, right? Right. Um, and, and now you're kind of crossing that line where that may be one thing that we really need to talk about is working on gotcha. your openings, because, you know, if you're... If you're bouncing around a whole bunch now, you're probably mm -hmm. hurting yourself because you're not playing structures you're familiar with. Mm -hmm. You know, so if you're, you know, you played E5 one game last game, right? Yeah. And now you're playing E6. Mm -hmm. So I can give you a whole bunch of advice here on this specific opening game that this guy played. But then if you're like, oh, I'm not going to play right. the French for a while, then a lot of that stuff is just out the window, right? Yeah. So. I do think at a certain point you might want to consider, okay, what do I want my repertoire to be? That's the first question, right? Mm -hmm. The reason you're so effective with white is because that's like the one area where you play the same thing over and over. Yeah, that's really, true. Right? You mm -hmm. play the Catalan, and then also yeah. you're, you know, you're a Georg Meyer groupie. Yeah, So exactly. that's great. Um, but, uh, okay, so you start out with a French, and, mm -hmm. and this is an interesting line by him. Normally you would say that this, this move on move three and move two, playing knight f3 and e5, you know, before establishing the pawn chain with d4 can backfire yeah. because if you play c5, which you did, mm -hmm. if he had just played d4, I would have said that this guy just didn't know his openings and was playing this way, you know, basically by mistake, the move to right. knight f3. But the fact that this guy played b4, now I actually know, okay, so this guy actually knew his line and his intention was very clear, mm -hmm. which is he's trying to eliminate your c pawn for something other than the d pawn so that he can establish this really strong pawn chain on the dark squares gotcha. and you've lost your ability, you've lost your ability to undermine d4. Mm -hmm. Now a pawn is a pawn, okay, mm -hmm. so uh, you still get a pawn. Yeah. But but this line has some real positional merit for him. He's sacrificing the queen side to mm -hmm. fully establish dominance over the center dark squares. And if we remember what eventually happened in this game in the critical moment was he relocated his knight. He got access to those dark squares, and eventually mm -hmm. you were kind of busted. Yeah. So before you're too hard on yourself, I want to say this guy played pretty well, and he also played faster than you. So I want to I want to go to the next critical moment. You develop. Okay. This is all fine. I actually mm -hmm. like what you did with queen to b6. I would say on move seven, instead of taking on a3, it might make sense to just build up on that tension. Yeah. Because as soon as you take on a3, you give them access to the c3 and a3 squares. Mm -hmm. If you play a move like a5 instead and just support your pawn, not because you're going to take back with the pawn, a pawn's pinned, mm -hmm. but because you're just trying to like establish this grip on the queen side. You play a5 because you just want to completely hold the dark squares for as long as you can. That yeah. might have been something interesting to consider rather than taking a3. Mm -hmm. um, he plays c3. Let, let's move ahead here. Knight e7, yeah. you play knight g6, takes and takes. I, I probably would have suggested taking on f8 with the knight. I would have done something else besides losing your right to castle. Yeah, yeah I thought about taking with the knight. I was just concerned about my development, but that probably that probably was yeah, because what ends up happening is, you, okay, yeah. you have I guess you have optically faster development because you take with the rook, but where's it going, right? Now your king is stuck yeah, in the exactly. center, and that, and that rook on f8 yeah. isn't useful. So if, yeah. you, if you were struggling with that, probably um, I would say you're already kind of overthinking things a little bit. If you go to move 8, you took, yeah. you took 11 seconds on knight e7, then you took 13 seconds on knight g6, um, and, mm -hmm. you know, I think, I think those moves... Probably one one thing to consider is uh, mm -hmm. one thing to consider is maybe you should have played a move like Bishop E seven or something instead of Knight E seven to avoid all this if you're worried about losing right. the right to castle. Right. Um, okay, I think the biggest issue on I mean I got to be honest like the biggest issue yeah. reg regardless of all this stuff is just your time. Mm -hmm. I mean if we go to like move thirteen, mm -hmm. you're you're already down like a full minute on time. Yeah. And and so I'm going to I'm going to try something with you in the next game. Okay. Which is which is going to be an experiment and I need you to trust me. I trust you. Can you trust me? Yeah. I need you to hold my hand and trust me on this one. I All trust right? you. What do you want me to do? 
Okay. The next game. Yeah. You are not allowed to mm-hmm. get under 30 seconds. Okay. 30 seconds is your timeout. Okay. If you get under 30 seconds, I don't care if you're winning, you need to resign. Okay. Okay? Okay. I've had a lot of students throughout the years struggle with different time management issues, playing too mm-hmm. fast and playing too slow. Sometimes there's just no way to correct yourself and, and make yourself realize, like, I'm literally taking 13 seconds on moves that I, that I considered in the first half a second. Right. Or I'm taking, you know, five, you know, it does, you know, I can, I can obviously apply that analogy further and further out. Right. The point is, you're convincing yourself you need to take more time than you do because it's a habit you've built up. Mm-hmm. And sometimes the only way to break a habit is to overcorrect mm-hmm. and to do things that literally make you uncomfortable. Like it literally brings you out of your comfort zone. Yeah. So I, I actually had a student who was doing this so much because basically it was a bottom line insecurity thing. He would play a game much longer than this. He would be playing long term at games and mm-hmm. he would just get himself under massive time pressure. So mm-hmm. I told him, I was like, you're not allowed to get under 20 minutes in this game, in a game 60. Like if you get under mm-hmm. 20 minutes, you have to resign. And he thought I was kidding. And I was like, <laughs> no. And he ended up going three and a half out of four that tournament for the whole tournament. Really? And he just he just played faster. Mm -hmm. And there was, like, no reason, there was no other way to convince him that, like, he was just taking unnecessary amounts of time and then blaming time pressure as an excuse for his losses. Mm -hmm. You're not in that realm yet, but the point is, I just would like you to realize that you are capable Mm -hmm. of playing much faster than you think. And the way we're going to correct this before your match with Hutch Mm -hmm. is by forcing you to speed up. So, next game, we're starting with 30 seconds, but but if I don't see the results I want, it may go up to a minute. All right. So, I want to see you play significantly faster. Let's do it. Okay. Okay. Um, by, by the way, while you're seeking the game, I'll just show the fans. So, uh, you know, I think that I think that uh, this whole line again. They, well, oh. yeah, we'll we'll talk about the game later. But the guy actually did play really well, and and so I don't really blame you too much. Look at you, look at you. You're playing Magnus Carlsen chess. You're gaining time on the clock. That's what I'm talking about, baby. All right, I'm muting myself again so I can make notes. Cool. Maybe that was slightly too much. Oh my lord. Okay, well at the very least you didn't lose because of time. This is <laughs> This is turning into like my worst chess day ever. No, all right. well it's good then. You'll get all your you get all your losses out of the way. All right. Um, I, I think I'm at 3 in a row right now. Okay, so what was the first move that was played that you didn't know? I know what it was. It was right here on move 5 after c5. You didn't know what to do here so you took on c5. Yeah, so c5 is unusual to me, but I figure takes, takes, and then queen takes d8. Okay. And he didn't take. Again, this is, I don't so, know this. But again, I want to go through, I, I'm, <laughs> you know, we're, we're working on this together. Believe it or not, I have a plan, even though it sounds like I'm just throwing things at you to do. Okay. So here's the thing. Mm-hmm. Um, again, you played, you played significantly faster for the first five moves that you knew and you were actually at three minutes and seven seconds on the clock right now after mm-hmm. you played c5 okay mm-hmm. you had three minutes and seven seconds on the clock so you had done the right thing i said blitz you're basically you got to use that time to gain time as you know the move but here okay so here would have been the first time where it might have been okay to take a little bit of time here for a second again okay. that, i'm not trying to confuse you but i'm trying to mm-hmm. i'm trying to teach you to manage your time not take your time mm-hmm. here's what people do in your situation, you have this habit, John, of taking your time. And so every mm-hmm. move, you take two or three seconds, and you kind of lollygag and ease your way into it. Mm-hmm. And before you know it, you're at two minutes and 45 seconds here instead of three minutes and seven seconds, even though you knew every move. 
Mm -hmm. Then a move is played that you don't know, and you actually take 15 seconds, which may be appropriate. You actually take some time to figure it out. But the right. point is, if you manage your time more appropriately by playing super fast when you knew the move, now mm -hmm. you have more time to actually think and actually right. make a better decision. So D takes C5 is okay. Theoretically, the, the, the more common... Usually C5 is actually not played until castles. So your mm -hmm. opponent played C5 prematurely. Normally the move is, is five castles, and then after you play knight F3, they play C5. That would be the theory. Gotcha. Um, so taking on C5 is fine, and then even taking on D6 is fine. Mm -hmm. And trading queens was fine. And at this point on move eight, you were actually still at three minutes and seven seconds and just up a clear pawn. Like, do you realize, look at this position on move eight. You're just winning here. Yeah. You're up a pawn. He's got an isolated D pawn, and, mm -hmm. you're, and you're up on, and, and, and you have more than time than, than what you started with. Yeah. So here is a good time for that. So that second point where we manage our time. The first mm -hmm. one is if we play someone or something we don't know. The second one should be, okay, now the game has changed a little bit. You're better and you're kind of thinking about how you want to how you want to have the right technique here. Yeah. Probably moving the knight to b5 as much as it's still a position where white's better. I would I would choose moves like bishop f4 mm -hmm. or rook to d1. Moves that develop pieces and do the same thing mm -hmm. rather than moving a piece twice. Yeah, in hindsight, I really would have just liked to play simply just knight f3 and castle. Totally fine too. Yeah. Um, yeah, knight f3 is also a move that just makes the most sense because it... To prepares to castle, it stops his his black yeah. knight from coming into d4. I mean, bishop right? f4, actually bishop f4 first, and then knight f3. They'll have to do something with the pawn, knight f3 castles. Bishop f4 looks good, I agree. Yeah. So my point was that once you've established an advantage, often mm -hmm. your question should be, what are the remaining weaknesses in my position? Mm -hmm. So as soon as you're winning, what are the remaining yeah. weaknesses in my position? Sometimes we look at a position and we say, okay, I have some double pawns and there's not much I can do about that. It's a positional mm -hmm. thing, but at least I'm aware of it. Sometimes you're like, okay, I'm, I'm winning here as long as I just get developed. Yeah. And, and so you only got yourself in trouble here by, I know this is funny because you overcorrected, but by basically playing too fast, right? You went yeah. totally nutty here and, yeah. and, and didn't follow like normal principles of technique, which is... As soon as you're winning, mm -hmm. technique says, let's be disciplined, let's solve our own weaknesses, yeah. make sure all of our pieces are playing, and theoretically, because we're up, we're up material, we're up mm -hmm. mathematically, we should win this game. Yeah, I've actually, I have a, like, an admission to make. I've actually never played 3-2. Never? I only played 10 minute. And, oh my uh, gosh, thank God we're doing this then, because you I, are uh, going to be in trouble tomorrow against Hutch. Hutch I, only plays Blitz. I uh I play two one as well, but so I'll play two one, and I think that's like bullet. And right. then ten minute is so my blitz rating is off of just ten minute games. Wow. No five minute, no three two. So. Well, that's a good thing to acknowledge because yeah. that's you know you're going to be losing some rating points here, in uh, in these three two games. Yes, yeah, because I am not. I'm seeing this now. This is not quite. I'm much better at 10-minute games than this. Okay, and again, that's yeah. that's what we would expect. You've already acknowledged openly. Like, we head into this match, as we said, mm -hmm. on paper, John Urschel's higher rated. I think you're, you know, you've shown to be a stronger player than the level I've seen Hutch play with, having done some analysis sessions with him. But Hutch plays a lot more blitz online than you do. Mm -hmm. And I think Hutch um, is going to have a, a, an advantage there. So if you're... What I'm trying to teach you to do here is not to not to overcorrect the fact that you're going to be under time pressure like you did in this game. Right. But again, we're learning how to manage our time. And you manage your time with this process. Play as fast as you can as long as you know the move. Mm -hmm. As soon as the move is made, you, you could have taken 10 seconds there. Not to say you wouldn't have played D-Take C5 anyway. Yeah. But there are transitional moments where someone plays something that you don't know. Mm -hmm. Or then there's transitional moments where you've reached a middle game and you, and you maybe take 10, 15 seconds to remind yourself of what you want your plan to be. Mm -hmm. Maybe there's a big opportunity for a big trade. There are gotcha. critical moments on a board where like, okay, you should take your time. But mm -hmm. then after that, you have to push yourself to understand that if you're not evaluating a critical moment, then every mm -hmm. second you're taking is a disadvantage. You want the clock right. to be your weapon, not your enemy. Mm -hmm. And you make your clock the you make the clock your weapon by playing faster than your opponent. Mm -hmm. Is this helping? This is helping. I okay. My hope is that like by the end, we're like we're gonna, in a we're gonna good see place. some progress. We're gonna see some okay. progress. So let's do it again. And I want to say right. again, you are you are capped at thirty seconds. You are you get two seconds for every move, dude. So All you right. are not allowed to cross the thirty second threshold. If you do, you have to resign. All right. All right.
right? I'm taking a deep breath. And so you better manage your time, not take your time. You better manage your time appropriately to make sure that you're playing quickly as you know to do, trusting your instincts, but pause in the critical moments so that you still feel like you're outplaying your opponent and making good decisions. Okay. All right, let's do it again. I'm going to take one more deep breath. This is so much fun, by the way. All yeah. right, fun for you. Okay. Are I'm you more do... nervous for tomorrow's match than you are before like an NFL game? Well, you know, like I'm I'm good at, you know, playing football and you practice. I'm not so good at like 3-2 blitz on chess.com. <laughs> right. So. All right, here we go. All Let's right, do it. Here we go. If they play E4, I'm going to play I'm going to play a Carol Con. Okay, then commit to it. So That's going to be your opening. All right. Okay. Wait, oh. For the rest of today's show and for tomorrow's match, I want you to commit to the Karakhan as your weapon against E4, okay? All right, maybe this dude's not playing. Uh, well, hold on. Give him a second. Maybe sometimes oh, people walk go. away. There you go. What the All hell right. is that? Well, exactly. So, I'm going to play D5, and I'm going to play a Slav-type setup. Okay, great. I love that instinct, right? You're not going to take a ton of time because someone played E3. You're going to trust the structures you're familiar with and go for it. All right, I'm going to be quiet now. Okay. Oh, shit. This dude's trying to mate me. No, don't try to mate me. Don't do that. That's not nice. No. All right, man. This is how you feel. Okay. Be that way. All right, let's. Okay, there's no knights nearby, so no smothered mates. <laughs> let's see. Uh, the good news is I have a knight on f8, and I think someone said, like, you can't get checkmated if you have one of those, so <laughs> I don't know. All right. Uh, all right, now let's open up a little bit. Okay. All right, now I need to really start thinking. Okay. Just chiming in to say, yeah, one of the best ways you you manage your time better. Think on your opponent's is, time. Exactly. You okay. bust your you bust yeah. your ass on your opponent's time. Yeah. And why do why do we think these guys in these when you watch Magnus and Hikaru, you see them on webcam, right? Yeah. They're focused the entire time. You, the way you outplay your opponent is you you're you're you just outwork them. All right. Uh, let's see. I'm gonna pre-move that Just in case. But okay, bishop takes first. Now I need to here. Okay, I didn't see that move. Yeah, there's a reason I didn't see that move. That's a pretty good move. Okay, let's see. All right, he's going to try to mate me. Queen h5, probably, maybe. Queen h5, knight f6, queen h8, king f7. Is this. Is there any other way to defend the knight to defend? Wait, am I even getting mated? Hold on. Is this, is this a real thing? Is there a real mate here? Okay. 
No, I don't buy this. I'm getting out. There's no mate here. Right. Now you got to move the rook. Oh, okay. Okay. Forced. Okay. Uh, more or less forced. Okay. Forced. Fuck it, mate. Sorry. I shouldn't be cursing on here. Is there a way to get out of this? Yeah, not that I see. All right. This has gone quite poorly. <sighs> okay. Obviously, I know you didn't mean to curse, so we're going to let that one go. We My apologies. It. No, it's okay. Uh, well, you know what? Real emotion on a chessboard. So apologies to everybody. Um, but you know what? I'm sure everyone here has done the same thing. So real quick, let's just back up a few moments to the critical moment on move 20. I want you to look at something on move 20. Okay. Uh, after, okay. On move 20 when you played knight f6. Yeah. Okay. So at this moment, what does it say mm -hmm. in the clock? You can see you have two minutes and 17 seconds. He has a minute 32. So you had done very well as far as your, your time management is concerned. Mm -hmm. All right. And you appropriately started thinking here. This was a super dangerous moment. Mm -hmm. You took a lot of time there. Um, and even though you didn't make the best move, I want to acknowledge you that to this point, this was probably your best managed time game. Mm -hmm. Okay. My only correction now would be that, so you made the right decision to realize that, you know what, he didn't have a mate. and that, or, or say that you came to the right conclusion, but then maybe you made the wrong decision. Like I'm wondering, can you just take his rook on A1? On a Um, it's dangerous, right? Yeah. It's super dangerous. He takes the knight, you move the king, but yeah. as you said, he doesn't have he doesn't have a mate. Yeah. Um, and actually, in this line, your bishop on a one would guard the g seven pawn. Right. So if he if he plays like queen h eight check, you just run to e seven, just like right. you did in the game, and and mm -hmm. now you actually get out and you're doing fine. If he if he plays moves like knight to g five, you know, instead of queen h eight check, you can play things like queen f six. You're defending mm -hmm. everything, and again, you're creating a, a, an, an escape route for your king. Mm -hmm. So I actually think that you came to the right conclusion, but then you, you just miscalculated. Knight f6 is actually the worst way to go about it because it blocks mm -hmm. the bishop's protection of the g7 pawn. Right. You can even play knight f8 instead of knight f6. Now, the issue there is he can play knight to g5, and he's threatening mate on h8. Right. But fun fact, I was calculating this. Yeah. You can actually play g6. So go to move 20. Instead of knight Wait. f6, you play knight f8. Yeah, so I thought about knight f8, but... Knight, knight g5. Yeah, I thought this and, was just mate. And then g6, and your knight guards h7, and your bishop guards h8. And you know what's funny? Is on the next move, even if he plays queen h6, you might even be able to just take the rook on a1. Everything is guarded. Wait, hold, are, are we... Are we sure about this? Wait. Uh, okay, so g6, mm -hmm. queen h6, bishop takes a1. What about, uh, well, yeah, I guess, yeah. Right, I mean, and, and if you're yeah. really scared, by the way, play bishop to g7 first with tempo, kick the queen out to h4, and then right, take it. Right, of course, a1. yeah, just bishop so, to g7. this was a... This was a critical moment and probably one that really you just lost this one because you were under pressure, you were under the attack, and you just miscalculated or, or underestimated the need for your bishop to be the defender. Your bishop is really a key defender to this whole position, mm -hmm. guarding g7, guarding h8. So I don't want you to be too discouraged about this game. That's yeah. what I'm saying. I'm saying I like the way you managed your time. You played quickly. And it, by the way, John, if you reach the critical position mm -hmm. with 45 seconds more than your opponent... Yeah. More often than not, you are going to win that game. I'm going to okay. say that again because Kaidanov taught me this when we did these U.S. chess schools, some of the initial U.S. chess schools, which mm -hmm. Greg Shahadi does now. 
Um, you know, what, we had a whole session one time with a room full of a bunch of young international masters like myself and a bunch mm -hmm. of really good players. And he just said, like, look, like if, you know, you get out of this mindset as a young kid where all the coaches taught you to slow down, slow down, slow down, because most young kids play too fast. Mm -hmm. And he was teaching us, again, to manage our time, not take our time. You shouldn't take time just on the principle of the fact that it makes you feel warm and cozy that you're a slow chess player. Right. No, the best chess players in the world are also the best chess players at fast chess time controls. Right. Play f and often they see the clock as their weapon, not their enemy. Right. And his point to me was very simple. It was like, look, if you reach the critical moment right here, mm -hmm. John, on move 20, this was a critical moment. You were choosing between taking a rook, saving the knight. There's a lot going on here. Mm -hmm. If you reach the critical moment with twice your opponent's time, more often mm -hmm. than not, you're going to win that game because you will make the right decision more often than not. Mm -hmm. Okay. So keep pushing yourself to do what you did in this game. Okay. And again, knight f8 would have been good. I actually think you could probably just take the rook. Mm -hmm. um, but probably if you played knight f8, if he played the best move, which would have been to save his rook, like rook b1, mm -hmm. you could play like g6 with tempo, and he moves the queen, and then run your bishop back. And mm -hmm. you're actually very safe if you have a bishop on the dark squares, and he doesn't have a dark square bishop to get rid of it. Mm -hmm. And again, just to say, like, if, if you play knight f8, if he plays queen h8 check, king f7, plays knight g5 check, and he gets all his little cute little checks in, mm -hmm. now what does he have? He doesn't have anything. Right. He's running out of uh, attacking power. Mm -hmm. So, um, anyway, so this is good. This was, this was actually a positive step in the right direction. I'm telling you, you're going to get a win, and then you're going to start to get a couple more after that where you're up on time. So let's do it again. I feel all like right. Morpheus. Again. All right. Let's do it again. Again. I'm trying to free your mind, John. I'm trying to free your mind. Let's do it. All right. Again, and you're going to follow the same technique. Fast chess, trusting yourself, pause in the moments that you know are critical, and mm -hmm. remember that speed up, right? Overall, more time is an advantage, not a disadvantage. Uh, yeah, don't know this. Okay. Okay, so if you don't know a system, try to calculate and establish calculate. an approach, uh, and then and then speed up. Once you yeah, commit yeah. to an approach, you speed up after that. C takes D5. Okay. How did I end up down on time? All right, I'm moving quicker now. Okay. Uh, okay, but hey, guess what? You're down on time, but is this a structure you're familiar with? Uh, yeah, I mean, this is... Overall, I'm right? It's an IQP. This you feel comfortable, right? Yeah, but... So, so you yeah, can, so you to can make them. it up. Yeah, okay, yeah. But they're about to get D4 in. And well, again, I, can't I don't want to give it. you advice mid game, yeah, yeah. but I yeah, want you I to just trust yourself. Keep playing fast, yeah. but don't be upset about don't beat yourself up about previous time taking. Just speed up. All right, yeah, okay. I'm speeding up. I think they just disconnected, which Nope, they're back. Okay. You're not gonna play D four there? Okay. Uh let's get this bishop out. Control the square. Fine. Alright, I'm blocking this. Blocking this thing. Oh, there's got to be something here. Is there... An, there's... Maybe not. Maybe not. All right. Fine. Maybe there isn't. Doubled pawns, yes, please. Okay. Uh, let's make him do something. Okay. Let's make him do something again. Okay. Just a 
send, and now double up. Okay, doubled. Okay, let's drop back. Down on time, down on time. Play faster, John. All right, takes rook d1. What if he just pushes the pawn? Well, then rook, d, rook c3. Okay, but no, 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 but rook, yeah, no, I don't want to do that. Also, I got to deal with some mate threats, so yeah, I'm probably just going to take that pawn and get some left on the next move. Yeah. All right, he's here, but he's not moving. Uh, all right, keep thinking. Rook takes a pawn takes d4. Rook takes d4. Rook. Now nah, let's just go g3. Rook a d8. Rook c6, rook 7 c6. All right, this dude's just, he's going to lose on time. I wonder what's going on. It yeah, doesn't say that he disconnected. No. Yeah, I don't know. That was weird. Yeah. Very weird. Probably like what happened is his kid looking at his avatar as his kid came in and just started running around and breaking stuff, right? Let's blame the kid. Must be. Must be the kid, right? Kid started breaking stuff, and so he didn't disconnect, but he, he mentally disconnected. Um, okay, John, phenomenal yeah. game. Even well, though he lost on time, <laughs> even though – what? I mean, phenomenal game, but the dude – just like stop yeah, the, playing. Yeah, the dude lost on time, but that's not your fault. Okay. Um, I like that you were prepared for the, you know, obviously if we play this one out, it's probably just equal. Yeah. Right? If he takes on E3 and you take back to free the back rank. Yeah. Right? Although, actually, if he takes on E3, can you get away with bishop to F3? Saving the bishop, guarding D1, and preventing him from playing E2. I actually think you could. If he takes on E3? Mm-hmm. You were analyzing in your head that if he took on e3, you were just going to take back, I think, to give yourself some luft. But I think you no, could that, play bishop No, that wasn't three. what I was analyzing. I didn't okay. think he was going to take on e3. You thought he was going to take the bishop back. Yeah, I thought he was taking the bishop back. Because okay, if, if he takes on e3, he's just giving me a piece. I'm going bishop f3. Okay, cool. Yeah, I just, so I just want to yeah. make sure you saw that. Okay, so oh, no, if he I was takes calculating on a8, rook takes a8, and then the consequences of uh, playing rook... Uh, rook d1. Rook d1, right, to pin yeah. the pawn. And then, but then he just plays d3, and now he's a passer, and maybe I play rook d3, but then he plays rook d8. Okay, but that's a this is a good thing for us to analyze then, because I actually, yeah. I think this is a good thing to, to look at your evaluation. The truth is, like, I don't know that he's going anywhere with this pawn. It's super close to your king, right? Yeah, I he's mean, not so going you... anywhere with this pawn, but... 
The no, you're thing... going to get it. Watch. You play e4. Like, after d3, you play e4 on move right, 26. Right, I, I just bring my king in. E4. And then you, yeah, then, you know, you play f3, and then and you then... play king f2 and king yeah. up. And Now, so here's the thing. If you didn't own the c file, mm -hmm. then giving him the d-pawn would be devastating, right? Mm -hmm. So, again, if, if your rook on c7 was in Timbuk2 over here on h3, I'm just doing something. Then, yeah. then your, your fear... And that hmm. danger you feel about giving him the D-pawn combined with weak tactics on the back rank or even just the open file hmm. would probably be really bad. But if your opponent doesn't have the ability to, to use the open files around that pawn, he probably can't convert it. Right. And, and that means it's not a pass pawn. That means it's an isolated pawn. Right. So I actually like the idea of rook to D1, even if he brings the rook back to D8 first instead of D3 to try to get you to trade once more on D4. Right. I probably I probably would just play E4 anyway. I would decline the trade just mm -hmm. so I could leave him strapped with this weakness. Right. And then I could start, you know, even if he bring realizes it. Yeah. yeah, I bring my king in and I feel really good about my chances to win this rook ending. Right. So I... I you know, you, you took a bunch of time out of the opening because he played this move c5 on move 2. You didn't quite know how to handle this. Yeah, I've actually never seen this before. Okay. Um, that's yeah. okay. So, yeah. back to the back to the beginning. Mhm. Mm um with uh with with c5 on move 2. You took on c5. Normally the main theory is actually to take on d5 since it's an opening you don't know, might as well give you some advice. Okay, perfect. Um and the reason you take on d5 first is because, uh, well, there's a few lines. But if they if they take on d4, for example, they keep playing symmetrical, you have mm -hmm. this inner mizzo. You play queen a4 check. And then they put a piece on d7, and then you take on d4. Gotcha. And this is a good line for white. Okay. Um, so that's just a real quick piece of opening advice. If, okay. you, if you take on d5, and if they take with the queen, um, there's a few things you can do. Uh, uh, knight can, c3? You can play knight c3. You can also play knight f3. If you play right. knight c3 and they play queen takes d4, you can uh, you can trade and then play like knight to b5, and you're going right. to get your material back and all mm -hmm. that stuff. Right, so, threatening um, the fork, yeah. So I want to go through what you did after that, though, because despite the time you took, you eventually reached a position that was very familiar to you, an isolated queen pawn. Yeah. You know, you, you feel comfortable in these positions. And I mm -hmm. want to say that starting with, like, move 11, b3, go to move yeah. 11, b3. Yeah, yeah. I actually think you played a phenomenal game of chess. I love bishop b2. Probably I would have played rook c1 first before knight d4, but okay, you 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 did establish both of these moves. The knight on d4 blocking the pawn, yeah. the rook to the file. Um, I really loved this idea. I, first of all, I was jet laughing inside about how quickly you went into the end game. I made a note of that, <laughs> how you were just so happy to get the queens off the board because you're such an old school Russian. and you're, like, You must have been a Russian in your past life, man. I mean, you must just you live for the end game. Yes. Um, everybody else watching the show would be like, why would he trade queen? But like, you just, like, for you, it's not even a second thought. You're like, nope. the sooner you get the queens off the board, the better. Yeah. Um, so you traded queens. In this case, I actually liked it, though, all jokes aside. because I just wanted to mess up his pawn structure, give me more targets, make weak pawns. Yeah, and yeah. he should have taken on d4, but he didn't. Yeah. So that allowed you to double his pawns and leave him with this pawn here. Mm -hmm. I love bishop g4. Bishop g4 makes sure that you will be the only one who has control over the c-file. Yeah. And your only real chance to convert on a win was probably here, where here, instead of bishop d7, yeah. the fact that you own the c-file... After rook c6, if you just trade it on c6 and then play rook to c1, he can't defend his bishop. He's got to move right, it to course. some horrible square. Yeah. And then you bring the rook into c7. Um, this just looks like it would have been like just super tough for him to hold. Mm -hmm. No, you're right. That that actually looks very attractive. But, but okay, I mean, like you were you were speeding up. You played a yeah. good game overall, and and you played bishop d7. You played rook c7. You were doing your best to execute an advantage. Um, probably on move 21 here, the last improvement you could have made is instead of going for the C file, I wonder if you should have played, like, try to play rook D1 and rook D4, like establish, like, a total gotcha. like, brick wall on that D5 pawn so that he mm -hmm. can never, never change the structure. Um, you know, when your opponent is strapped with an isolated queen pawn weakness, you just know that part of their strategy all the time is as soon as they can trade off that weak pawn for a healthy right. pawn, they're going to do it. Mm -hmm. So, you know... No, you're aware right. Of that. I mean, I am controlling the C file already just with my bishop and rook. I don't need yeah. my other rook for that. You're right. 
Yeah, so yeah. that would have been that would have been one improvement there. But I don't want to spend too much time on this because I want to get another game. I'm realizing the best preparation we can do for you again is to have you keep playing and, and keep. So you have all an right. assignment again. You're not allowed to go below 30 seconds. Don't forget that. All right. Go all for right. it. Here we go. Yeah, this one looks like a no go. Okay. All right. That's too bad. All right. So let's get another one. He aborted. There we go. Hopefully. There you go. Caracon. Right, Caracon. All right. We're committing. Okay. Uh, the hell is this? Sorry, no cursing, no cursing. All right, so what is he actually threatening? Maybe he's trying to threaten mate. No, I'm not. I'm not too scared about that. Yeah, still not too scared. All right, I like free development. Okay. Yeah, you need to leave. Okay. All right, where's my play? Uh, I don't really, okay. It's not a concern yet. I'll deal with that in a little bit. Let's, let's just keep safe for a second. Safety is my priority, right? Okay. Uh, Knight e4, I like, if they'll let me. Yeah, I like that. Okay, take back with the queen. Okay. That is a free pawn, which, yes, I'm going to take. All right. This is use no time. It's time to move faster. Okay. Uh, he's bringing the rook in. How do I make progress? Let's actually, yeah, I'm going to do a strange maneuver. I don't know if this is any good. Okay. All right, I'm getting my king out of here. This, 
This has gone on long enough. Okay. Safety. Let's get some safety going. Uh, Rook H8 there is better. Probably. Yeah. Okay. Uh, would have kind of liked to put my knight there. Um, what's going on here? This I can pause for a second, I think. G3 takes. Yeah, takes would be crushing. Let's see what's going on here. King H3 is in a knight? Or just move the king back? What's the idea here? What are we doing? Okay, king H3. Okay, now he moves back. Yeah, of course. Uh, let's just open files here. Okay, and now okay, faster, faster, faster. Gotta move. Yeah, I gotta move. Yeah, thirty seconds. Right, I'm gotta moving. Move fast. I'm moving. I'm moving. Be aggressive. Be I'm aggressive. Moving. I am. I am. I'm moving. Oh, that was right. probably at the best. All right. Be, it's okay. Be aggressive. Go, be aggressive. Okay, now I'm letting him run. All right, I gotta. I'm not getting under 30 seconds. I'm not doing it. I'm not doing it. Oh, I just hung a piece. No, you didn't. Uh. Go. Oh, oh you got under no, 30 seconds. No, 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 no. All right, I'll let no. you play. If you get back above 30 seconds, I'll let you have right. it. Get a better get back above. There you go. I'm going, I'm going, I'm going, I swear. Keep moving. I'm moving, I'm moving. I swear I'm moving. You gotta finish this game above thirty seconds. Yeah, yeah. Uh, okay, I'm moving. I'm moving. <laughs> I I promise you, I'm going. All right, I like it. All right. Oh, I could have just taken with the rook there. Why am I doing things like this to myself? Okay. Uh. Whew, that was just. Yeah, not what you want. Okay, well now I, it's tempo. You play fast enough. You still got this. You should okay, get back I'm, above 30 I'm playing seconds. fast. I'm playing fast. I'm going to get above 30. Oh, I didn't get won. above 30, but he resigned. So, you know. Uh, I bet this guy is, is watching the show on Twitch. Um, <sighs> um, <sighs> it's too fast. It's too fast. <laughs> too okay, fast you, for my taste. But you need to. You yeah. need to play faster. You have no choice, right? Yeah. We're preparing no, you for a We're match. Preparing. Yeah. I mean, yeah. you know, even after today's show, I want you to play with this mindset. I want you to play mm -hmm. some 3-2 with this mindset of okay. of holding yourself to that standard. Whew. Um Yeah, so I mean, the, I uh again, I, like I I could go through a number of specifics in this game and but overall, you played well, but you took too much time, right? Yeah, and uh, I mean, especially if we're going by my thirty-second parameter, you eventually won, you know, against that, against my my sort of artificial deadline for you. But it is still a lesson that, again, in in a few moments earlier, yeah. I think I think the biggest moments where you really took time. Let me go back to because we can see the clocks here. Yeah. Um. 
So like around here, like you played queen to g7, I'll go to move 23. So you played the move queen to g7 to offer the queen trade on move 22. Yeah. And then you started bringing your knight out, like, but you also started overthinking things. One thing I wanted to just impart on you is I don't think you realize that there is zero attack here. In fact, there's zero attack even before you play queen to g7. Yeah. I mean, as Mikkel Tal said, with a knight on f8, there is no checkmate. I mean, seriously, I want you to look at this now with fresh eyes, without yeah. any. It's not your own game anymore, so you're not afraid. Yeah. Like, what I'll give move? you five. I'll give you five moves as white, and show me how your attack gets better. Uh, what move? On move twenty-two, instead of queen to g seven, or after queen to g seven. I'm trying to prove a point to you that if you go to the position of move twenty-two after white yeah. played rook e one, yeah. with your knight on f eight. I'll yeah. let I'll let White play rook f rook e three and rook f three to attack, and then I'll move the queen. Then, like I'll give you hmm. several moves, and the point is you have no attack. White has no right. attack here. There is zero going on. Zero. Yeah. In fact, I'll even let you play king h two, rook h one, king back to g one. Like I'll give you mm -hmm. five moves ahead, and there's still no threat. Mm -hmm. Right. Yeah. So, one thing I wanted to say is that one of the biggest ways we lose games in chess is by seeing ghosts right is by yeah. overreacting in situations where there was there was nothing really going on and it's mm -hmm. difficult because that's where that's where computers always beat us right right um so your your correct plan in this position john on move 22 mm -hmm. is not to worry about the king side but is to go for your own counterplay. Play a move like rook A to B8 and play B4. Try to open mm -hmm. up some lines for your pieces. Mm -hmm. If I had three moves to make here as black, they would be rook A to B8, rook E to C8, and then B4. Those would be my moves. Gotcha. And I would be looking for a counterplay, and I would be laughing in the face of danger because black has built up this huge H-file battery, and mm -hmm. it's just it's just eating granite. There's nothing going on. Mm-hmm. So that was the main thing I wanted to impart on you. So gotcha. with that knowledge, you're going to look at your next 10 moves and be like, dear Lord, what was I doing? I mean, you go out yeah, of no, your way was, to play like... I was like you're... completely... Know that at that point, I was completely just like, how do I not get checkmated here? Right. And, and I'm looking was... at this like there is no checkmate, right? There's zero... Yeah. In fact, no, if you you're just, right. If you just leave the knight on F8 and so... So you play f5 and then walk the king. And so you end up making this whole crazy mess for yourself. But, yeah. you know, we look at the position on move 30 and you've completely opened up your king side. Now, the reason I think this guy was watching on Twitch is I think I think he started playing faster, thinking that if he just you know got you below 30 seconds, I was going to make you resign, which I was planning to, but then I decided to let you finish it. Um, so he, I mean, these last few moves, if you look at the time, he played like he played like rook h2 and rook h1 and king h2. Like, what are these moves? This is ridiculous, yeah. right? He's not playing yeah. anything good here. And, and, and so you took the opportunity to kind of flip the script, and now you start getting an attack. Yeah. Um, and so really from here on out, again, I really liked your chess. I loved I loved G4 and G3 check. I loved how aggressive you were, but what did I not like? You were already down to like 45 seconds left. Yeah. That was the problem. So mm. so I wanted to show you that the moves in this game that you spent the most time thinking about, John, were actually your worst moves. Right. The moves that you were playing with knight to D7 and F5 and yeah. king F7 and H5, those were the moves that you took a lot of time because you were seeing a ghost. You were yeah. seeing ghosts on the king side. Yeah. I, like, this probably isn't a confession that you are, like, unaware of, but I don't know why, but, like, I hate getting check. I hate getting checkmated. Yeah, yeah. No, and so you're, so like, you're seeing ghosts before like, it's even there. I yep. don't like when my king safety starts getting threatened. Like, so here's how I'm going to help you overcome that, okay? Yeah. Because it's, it's the same way that you realize other people – a lot of people have a bias about trading queens. Yeah. They hate trading queens. Hate queens come off the board. And you look at that and kind of laugh. And you're like, look, like, one, I really enjoy playing positions with the queen off the board. But two, if the position needs it, what would you tell those people? You'd be like, look, dude, you have to be willing to trade queens if you can go to a better end game. Mm -hmm. Same would go to you. Like, you have to not see ghosts. The position yeah. is either you're either really in trouble or mm -hmm. you're not. Mm -hmm. And... You know, the more you learn to defend positions where you sort of came under fire, the easier it'll be for you to kind of look at those positions and kind of shrug it off. Yeah. You know, like that other game you played, the one where the you, where you did get, you know, in trouble, right, with the bishop on the diagonal, remember earlier in the show, right, where you could have taken yeah. the rook? Mm -hmm. Okay, and that one you were really under some pressure, and it actually was really dangerous for you. And, and, you, yeah. and if, you, if you had found the right moves, I think you were going to be fine. But, mm -hmm. but in this case, it's like your preconceived idea of just how scared you are of being under a checkmate attack made you, made you completely overreact to White's attack in this game.
Yeah, no, that's completely so, fair. We're going to play one more game, and then okay. you and I are going to bounce, and Grandmaster Eric Hansen is going to take over the Twitch stream for the title Tuesday. So All for right. anybody who's just joining the show now, maybe you're here a little early for Eric, or maybe you came for me and John. Stick yeah. around, and Eric Hansen will be bringing you title Tuesday. Um, I don't know who's signed up so far, but I do expect there to be a number of super strong players. We already have Demetrion Draken in the title Tuesday. Um, we have Ibarra. We have uh, Nicholas. Uh, oh, not not Nicholas Tesla. I said Nicholas Tesla because his username <laughs> is Tesla, but I forget his name. Um, uh, but we've got a ton of strong grandmasters. I do think Hikaru is going to play today, and maybe I'll ping MVL because I was chatting with him earlier about Bughouse Classic MVL. Gotcha. Um, but anyway, so everyone stick around. John, I want you to play one more game. Let's do it. Go get it, baby girl. Go get it. Okay, uh, Knight C3 I want to get in at some point, but first, yeah, first I think I want to get G3, Bishop, G2, and Castles in. Wait. Uh, no, I need to play Knight C3 right now. Yeah, that needs to get done. Queen A5 might have been some trouble. Okay, there it goes. Here. Mm, castles. Okay. Uh, keep an eye on the E2 pawn. Let's go Bishop D2. Why not? Maybe they'll think about moving their queen. And they do. Okay. Uh, Rook E1. Support E4. This is a common idea. He's... Mm, okay. And the blunders are beginning. Okay. Let's see. He's kind of close to getting trapped, isn't he? Maybe. Maybe not. Maybe not. No, not really at all. Not really at all. Just give him the pawn back because I'm a nice guy. Okay. Let's see. G4, he wants to come in on E5. No. I really want, want to get something out on C6. Uh, yeah, that's not coming the easiest for me right now. Hmm. Right, faster, faster, faster. Uh, where does it, where do my knights want to go? All right, I gotta move quicker. I, I gotta move quicker, but I gotta find. You know what? All right, let's just play something. Let's just play something. I don't think there's anything to fear with that move. Okay. I'll take. That's fine. Ah, okay. Now I just gave them a better piece. All right, the knight can come in on c4. Let's, let's change the location of that bishop. Not concerned. Okay, they want to close it up. Move faster. Okay, knight d3. Yeah, okay. Yeah, I'm not... 
I'm not sold yet. This is a strength. Okay. All right, let's see. Oh, what's wrong with this? Is this not a free piece? That looks like a free piece. I think that's a free piece. Yeah, that was a free piece. Okay. Uh, faster. so slow yeah let's just do this that seems reasonable actually that was a blunder last move that was a blunder indeed let's do time speed up time time I'm speeding speed up. up I'm speeding speed I'm speeding up. I'm speeding I'm speeding. Like, where are you going now? Now, come on. You got to trade with me now. There we go. Yeah, I figured. You take the pawn, I take that pawn. Good trade. All right. Let's bishop there. They can double up on the second if they want. It's not going to help, I don't think. All right, I'm in a position. I'm better. Let's win it. Okay. Uh, I like that attitude. Yeah. I think I'm going to quote that for social media. I'm in a position. I'm better. Let's win it. Yeah, but now I have to win the game. So, okay, pawn e6, pawn takes, pawn takes. Okay. Uh, let's see. Yeah, we can trade if you want. Also, why am I doing stupid things? Why don't I just take on e7? I'm doing stupid things today. Okay, I see this. Uh, okay, well now I'll just take on e7. Okay. Let's just do this. Threaten something else. Play fast. Fast, fast. I'm playing fast. Okay. Uh, I'm going to bring my king up in a second. Well, I'm going to, yeah. Okay. It's easy. Yeah. There's like no threat there. This bishop on f2 is like killing at its job right now. Okay, resigns. And I had 31 seconds. Oh my gosh, you give me like a heart attack here. Oh man. Dude, I just um, I completely blundered on uh I saw it as soon as I moved. On, Where did I the B two pawn, yeah, the queen takes B two, yeah. Um that was before. No, I'm talking about Oh, just a few moves ago instead of taking E seven. Never mind. I sometimes when I like can't calculate because you know I gotta move fast. Sometimes I'll like mistakenly think something might have worked for them, but it doesn't. Never mind. I thought I made a mistake somewhere, but no. It's okay. Fine. Well, you did great. I mean, in this position, there's yeah. no real way for Black to even stop Bishop f4 mate. I mean, White is just winning in this position. Um, yeah. There's no way to stop Bishop f4 mate, probably other than g5, which allows Rook f5 mate. So yeah. anyway, he was made, and not even sure if you realized how mated he was, but this position has been over for a while. So. Mm -hmm. I want to bring. I want you to go back to the move on on move twenty five first. Okay. Before you played queen to b five. Okay. So we're in this position now, and obviously at the end of the day, 
the whole practical psychological clamps and pressure I'm putting on you to speed up mm -hmm. is not really because I want you to resign at 30 seconds, though I am willing to be that extreme. And mm -hmm. if I need to, I will go abusive Russian chess coach on you. Okay. <laughs> okay. So you need to speed up. Okay. But I want to point out the real goal I have is to stop you from taking unnecessary time. Yeah. Right. And I want to point out that over the next several moves, yeah. you played just kind of like whatever moves, and you ended up taking like unnecessary time. So you played queen to b5. Look, look at this position on move 25. Yeah. Okay. On move 25, you're up a piece, and you have a minute and 19 seconds left. Yeah. You cannot justify taking almost 30 seconds on that move. Yeah. Like, and by the way, all you did was play tickle. Then you took another couple seconds to come back to b3. Yeah. And then I basically yelled at you and said, speed up, because you were about to cross under 30 seconds. And so you took eight seconds and then played rook a4. Yeah. From here on out, the fact that I yelled at you, you make every move in the next, you make every move basically within a second or two seconds, right? And you play yeah. much better moves than queen b5, mm -hmm. queen b3. You yeah. just played instinctively. You mm -hmm. played queen c4, you forced the trade, you took with the rook and just quickly calculated that if he took a2, you win d3. Mm -hmm. Like, look at the time here. You were yeah. gaining time on the clock. Playing, mm -hmm. You played bishop e3, like, instantly, right? Mm -hmm. And, like, if I'm not putting pressure on you, here's the kind of thing you would do, John. You would sit here and take 10 seconds on this move just to feel good about playing bishop e3, and there's no reason to. Yeah. And anyway, I just want to prove to you that that's what I'm talking about, mm -hmm. all right? You have to push yourself to play faster and not take unnecessary time. Mm -hmm. I mean, look, I mean, over the next few moves, like bishop e3, you, you gain time. Rook b7, same exact time. So you played within two seconds. Uh, rook d4, you took you took five seconds on total because you because you used two seconds. So again, that's fine. Yeah. You could have just taken e7. But again, you, you played rook yeah. d4, then you took e7. And again, from here on out, you're basically playing instantly, and, and eventually you win. Yeah. So the way if I hadn't yelled at you about about rook a4, what would happen is you may get yourself down to just a couple seconds and then only start playing queen to c4 and actually and actually doing it right when you literally were going to lose on time. Mm -hmm. And then who knows? Then you open yourself up to mouse slips and all kinds of stuff. Right. So as extreme as this seems, it is mm -hmm. important that you appreciate that taking unnecessary time, even if you don't feel the immediate negative effects, does mm -hmm. have a negative effect on your game. And eventually it will catch up with you. Mm -hmm. So if I give you an assignment before tomorrow, the we best way you're going to push yourself is by, again, following our technique today. You're going to mm -hmm. play blitz chess with the goal of using the time as your weapon. You want Your time is now your asset, not your enemy. Stop right. being irritated mm -hmm. with being under time pressure and try to get your opponent under time pressure. I want you to completely change your mindset. Mm -hmm. Okay, That involves playing fast as long as you know. Mm -hmm. pausing in the critical moments and then pushing yourself to not treat every moment like it's a critical moment. You know what I right. mean? I mean, again, I would rather see somebody take less than a second on 20 moves and then a minute on a move than see them average five seconds a move for mm -hmm. 20 moves. You see what I'm saying? Both both equal a minute? Yeah. That's because I actually know that if someone is is playing instantly in focus and then they paused in a critical moment because they sense mm -hmm. the opportunity to win, I'm telling you, that person wins more often than mm -hmm. the person who just takes five seconds of move on the principle of the matter or because they just don't want to be rushed. Yeah. Anyway, so that's the kind of the point. And, and as mm -hmm. far as how the games went, you did get better throughout the day, by the way, so be happy. Overall, overall you improved this, and I mm -hmm. think that if you continue to push yourself... It's something that is not only going to improve your blitz and against this match against Hutch, John. It, yeah. it will make you a better calculator because, okay. you, you know, I want you to I want to point out that once you started playing instantly, mm -hmm. your moves were just as good. In fact, nay, I would argue better than the moves that you took 40 seconds on with queen to b5 and queen to b3. Mm -hmm. You just like you stopped. You basically, for lack of a better, better, better way to say it, you stop bleeping around. You just <laughs> focus and you execute mm -hmm. and you win. Mm -hmm. and, also, and it, as a side note. Sorry to everyone watching. I apologize. I think I might have cursed once or twice, maybe three times. And <laughs> I'm extremely all, sorry for that. But, you know, I get, you know, playing and, it's, you know. It, first of all, it's okay. Blitz is, TV, Blitz we, is very uh, kind of stressful for me. So You know what? I nearly curse on every show. In fact, if people understood half the pop culture references I make, I probably wouldn't have a job. But um, but anyway, no, but seriously, this, on Twitch, I don't think they mind at all. We have our own standards of trying not to allow too much cursing on Chess TV, but it's okay. Yeah, well, uh, yeah I, in know, fact, I, people, I are, people are screaming at you. 
people are screaming at you on Twitch right now, like WTF, dude, don't apologize. You know. So anyway, gotcha. um, the uh, I want to thank you on the on the on behalf of the Twitch chat. Yeah. They really like this show. Uh, no, we are like, ending. I, I really want to say thank you to the Twitch viewers. Thank you to the Chess.com viewers. Like seriously, I love you guys. Danny's awesome. The whole site is awesome, and like. I'm just a guy who's trying to get better at chess and like has aspirations of like eventually being a good chess player and I appreciate you like coming and watching and like being a part of this and you'll be seeing more of me trying to well, be, you know. You're getting lots of love. Chess. You're getting lots of love in the chat. They love you. No, um, I I'm serious. Like I love like chess.com people. I love like the chess community and I'm just trying to get better. Cool. Yep. Well, um, you will be. I mean, obviously, you guys know. I know. I, I said amateur hour would be, and it is going to be a weekly staple along with my bullet brawl show. A good balance between bullet brawls and this. But John will be a regular guest host on this show at least once a month, if not more. Yep. Um, and uh, again, it was great today. I think you made progress throughout the day, which is really saying something. I, think I mean, so honestly, too. it's it's difficult to make progress in such a short time span. And I think that my goal is not just that you make progress in this immediate sense, but you establish this sort of like, all right. You start to have a new appreciation for how you're managing your thought process, not just taking your time, pushing yourself to be more focused even on your opponent's time, pushing yourself mm -hmm. to appreciate that unless you're about to solve the world's problems, then the position you're being faced with is not the critical position yet. Right. And you're going to need time there. And so it's a, it's a game. It's not a science, right? Yeah, and a game involves that practical time management. And so... <laughs> You know, that's one of the things that Blitz forces us to learn. And if we do it right, it will improve our calculation because we learn like, hey, I'm actually mm -hmm. playing at a higher level and I'm playing faster and I'm pushing myself to do it. So that's where it can be useful. So, all right, man. Um, thank you, everybody in Twitch. Obviously, repeat everything John said. Thank you, everybody in Chess.com TV. You guys have been awesome. You've been here. East Seals, Tom Harper, Diamond Member with lots of consonants that I can't pronounce, South McBeast. Uh, thanks, everybody. John? Good luck in tomorrow's match. I won't be talking to you till after the match, really. At least not on Chess TV. We'll be right, interviewing true. you after your match with Hutch. So good luck, man. Oh, I got a side question. Am I allowed to listen to music? Yeah, you are. You and okay, you and cool. Hutch. Yeah, it's totally cool. Um, and um, want to remind everybody real quick because I almost forgot to make one more shout out. Stick around. Eric Hansen is about to go live. I'm sure he'll go live a little early. Uh, real quick, real quick check at the players. Looks like. Uh, you got more and more strong players coming in, so we should be in for a fun and epic title Tuesday. Who do we and, uh, uh, Who do we have? Who are the big names? Uh, as I said, Dimitri Andrakin is the biggest name, um, and then we have Grigory Oparian, who's that young uh, that young kid who just played in the Zurich tournament. He's like a super strong grandmaster. I I think German. Let me gotcha. see who is. Do we have no Yorg? He's, that no, hurts he's, me. Okay, he's Russian. He's from Moscow, so he just played. So he's he's actually number one. Mm -hmm. um, and then we have a lot of the other regular, you know, super strong list of grandmasters. And uh, it looks like uh, Kostinyuk's playing. So Alexandra Kostinyuk, nice to have the former women's world champion Wait, becoming but where a regular. Is, where's Jorg at? I know he might not be, like, everyone's favorite player, but he's my favorite player. I don't think he's registered yet. He's not in here. Gotcha. He's usually okay. here. He usually does play, but we got ten more minutes. The pros show up at the last minute. So. That is true. All right, John. All right. Thanks for doing this, man. Good luck in tomorrow's match. Thank appreciate you to everyone it. for and being here. Danny, thanks for all the help, man. Really appreciate it. Peace out.